OK, we start again. Who uses a backup program? <laughs> OK, you use Lucky uh, Backup. What do you guys use? Anything in particular? I use my mailbox as an archive. Yeah. Um, are there things you miss in that program? <laughs> this is going to be a hard sell. Do okay. Then another question: Do you use a synchronization program? Anybody? No. Uh, so the, the next question is very easy. What do you use? Well, that's simple, isn't it? And what do you miss? Again, the easy questions. Sorry? Greg, what, what synchronization program do you use, Greg? R-Sync. R-Sync, okay. Does everyone know R-Sync? Or has heard of it? Okay. Well, this isn't R-Sync. This is better. Or at least different. No, the difference is that rsync is basically a command line uh, program, and this is a graphical program. Let me tell you why I built EasySync. I wanted file backup. That was the easiest thing to do. I wanted also, because I work sometimes on my laptop, sometimes on my PC, to synchronize files between them. Yes, you can copy everything over and copy it all back, but that takes a long time. I also wanted to see what was happening. So I wanted a graphical view of the planned synchronization before it happens. Because generally, if it has happened, then it's gone wrong. <laughs> That's life. And you said, oh yes, I put in the wrong parameter here or there. Normally speaking, if we're talking about synchronization, it is on different machines. So you synchronize across the net to your NAS, to uh, another machine, to the cloud maybe, and everything's possible. I wanted a simple interface and a graphical interface, and I wanted it to be for an unlimited number of files. Well, the last one is almost correct, because as we all know, it depends on memory and this size, unlimited. Okay, I've, this program is now almost at 3.2. I still have found a, a few bugs in it, so I'm not releasing it yet. But the main difference is, since none of you know what this program is, <laughs> is that I have added some icons uh, to explain why an anomaly occurred. And basically what I am talking about is you're copying in synchronization mode of one file to another file. If this file is the latest file, you want to copy it across. If this file is the latest file, you want to cross it that way. But what happens if both have changed? Which one should you use? This is what we call an anomaly. And there are various sorts of anomalies which I have determined. And it was not previously easy to see what the anomaly was. So I've added some icons to better explain it. Uh, anomaly is also now displayed in the prediction window. I have a window which indicates what's going to happen. And it is possible to use scripts to do whatever you want to do with this program. And I've completely overhauled that part of the program. And I think it is better. You can now create and edit scripts in situ, whereas previously you had to go to an editor and change them. A log file is created, and you can now access it a little bit easier. Sounds have been added. As I said this morning, I think one of the problems is with a PC laptop, PC has a buzzer nine times out of ten, but the laptop doesn't. So you want to be able to choice. I've also made drives uniquely identifiable. If you're copying stuff, and for example to a, a thumb drive, as the Americans say, or a USB stick, 
You want to make sure that it's the same USB stick every time, or not. But at least you want to have the ability to check what you're doing is to where you think you're going to do it. Those are basically the improvements. Um, there are some minor things, so as uh, the direction which you're synchronizing is now displayed a little bit better. And we've improved the logic when changing sync files. A couple other options, and of course the big one, bug fixes. There's always bug fixes. And probably during the demo, <laughs> we will get a few more bug fixes. Okay, so now I have to go over to the demo. I will explain it completely, since most of you have never seen this program before. So let's, uh, questions you don't get to ask yet. So here we go again in VirtualBox. The program, EasySync. This is the program. And basically what you have here are two windows. You have a direction, which is here. And this looks like the wrong version. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, it's the wrong version. Uh, so I'll have to tell you what is different and you have to believe it. <laughs> okay, basically what you have, you have a, a local or local remote address which you're going to use. So you can say, I want to go from local to local remote. And you give the indication by this wheel. You have to, of course, give an indication of what you want to copy. And this we generally do on directory in Evo. And I haven't got in this one any directories in. This is really going to be great. So, So there's a limited number of directories I have here. That's why we don't find anything, because the directories are not present here. <laughs> okay, then we take the root directory. Normally you select the directory you want to copy or back up or synchronize or what have you. And for this purpose, I will say the same directory. Now what you see is immediately the system reads all those files in that directory and lists them on the left hand side for this is in the local, and the remote should, of course, be a different drive. Unfortunately, I don't have other drives on this uh, virtual box, but you can believe me. What you now see is the list is analyzed it, and if I want, I can, can have a look and what you see is the file that I'm looking at. It tells me the information about that file if required. And I can indicate a direction if I want to. Normally speaking, this shows automatically. This is if you want to know a little bit more about it. And I'm now really thinking, where is the uh, correct value? I will show you the differences later because it's not on the scene. Okay, so basically I said if I wanted to, to copy files, I would press this button, which just basically copies it. 
what you see is he starts to ask me. That is because I'm in manual mode. So if you want to check that you have everything as you want, you can do it in manual mode and step through it. I will switch over to automatic mode. If I now say, do, it says, it's done, because there's nothing to do. It says, no errors, no anomalies, and if I want, I can look at the log. The log will show practically nothing. It should show the files, that the files have the same date and size, and therefore it just skips them, because they're already there. One of the things that you can do, if I have a look at my settings, in the automatic, you have the option to check files with an MD5. Because if a file says, I am size 10, at this date and time, does not mean to say that the other file is identical. You can only do this if you examine the file bit for bit. The easiest way to do this is with a checksum. So I can switch on checksum checking. So what it now does, when it reads these files, it generates the checksum for each of these files. Well, it doesn't actually generate the checksum. If it's been checked earlier, I put the checksum in an EA. Then it doesn't have to read the whole file, which is not a problem, of course, if it's a small file. If it's a large file, it takes a long time. OK. Um, what you see here, I can see when I've st started the uh, action that it says there are five files, none are different, five are the same, there are none missing, none are newer, none are older, none have been deleted, and none are actionable because everything's been done. It doesn't have to be copied. At the bottom here, you see when we analyze, and you'll see that happen fairly quickly. It was really quick. <laughs> you didn't see it. And then it goes over to synchronizing, which had already taken place. So normally you can see what is happening. On a file basis, you would see the file move. Okie dokie. Um, Let's have a look, if we go, this will be the synchronization method. So I'm going to synchronize between left and right. Let's Oh, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> that was outside of the virtual box. So. So just copy to a file, which doesn't yet exist. So I've now created a file, which is called AAAA -A 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 in the root. So if we go back, I say refresh. And what you see is that file has been created. And of course, since we're using the same directory, they're both the same. Let's try and correct this a little bit. I will... There's automatic filling of directories if required. OK, now I will say refresh. And what you now see is because the one directory is the root, and the other directory is a directory which I've just created, ABC. And what he says is, well, these are all missing. They are red. And he's saying these all have to be copied across. So if I'm synchronizing, so we then say, uh, synchronize. And it's been done. 
If I refresh, this is interesting because it's the same directory, but I will refresh again if I'm correct. Old version, terrible. But basically, what you see is that it has synchronized the information. What happens if something goes wrong? When we are synchronizing this information, if he's copying across, it uses what I call the vault. You can optionally specify a vault, which basically, if something is overwritten, saves that information first of all in the vault, so that if something was wrong, you can get that information back. This is going to be terrible. As I say, I've got the wrong version here. But basically, in the vault, which is not working on this version, I have to change this because this is. Give me five minutes, guys, because this presentation is not going to work like this, so hang on. I have to go here because we copied it across and with a bit of luck it was on this yeah this is the correct version ha okay um, people were talking just now about languages what language do you want I have Chinese in another program if you want it, but you have to cross check it that it's correct. No, but seriously, what you here see is in this program, there is the possibility to do auto languages. When that is selected, it lets you see what language has automatically been selected, or you can change it to something else. I won't change this now, which it should, might work. No at least the messages in German, uh, but I have not yet updated the language files to work with this version. The same applies if you are using, uh, looking at the help file, and it's a German system, it's seen German, you get the German help files. It's a sort of German. Google has helped a lot. <laughs> yeah? But as I say, if people find anything which is, doesn't make sense, then just let me know, I can change it. I've used that as well, yeah, yeah. DeepL is better, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, well, the, the, the problem is you can translate something, uh, but if we're talking about uh, computer terminology that's then again different okay what you see when I start this program it says that the vault update has been completed the vault is the system which takes a copy of everything you've overwritten and saves it uh, the reason it's updated this version had a slightly better algorithm than previous versions Okay, we were trying to start and show something. I will get rid of that. Basically, um, you have to choose whether you're going to use uh, a manual or automatic synchronization. The difference being is you see here in the manual everything will generate a prompt. So if you want to check how the synchronization would work, you can use a manual, and we will do that. So let's go out here. We have to select something. <coughs> uh,
<laughs> a small problem, it's unregistered, this version. Um, basically, the program works for 30 days um, because I've had this version a long time on the system. It says it's older than 30 days. Okay. After 30 days, you can't do much with it. That's basically the whole idea. So as we start again, let's have a look. Uh, refresh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm wondering if I've got... Okay, I don't think I have. Okay, I have one of the things that you can do is use GFC, and I don't think I've installed it on this virtual box. No, GFC is not on it. If you have GFC, you can automatically compare files if they are different. Um, okay, uh, we will. These files look to be the same. If we look, we can see that the modification date and size is the same. If you've got good eyes, you can probably read that. This also. So, what I will do, I will change one of these files quite simply. I just copied the config files across the so as so go. Uh, oh no, I do it differently. Uh, I won't do that. Now, what I'm doing now is only saving the file as it was. So, what is the difference? We should now see that it says these files are different. But it says they're only different with regards to date and time. I can say, I can copy the file. I can compare it. But that only works if GFC is installed or I can copy in the other direction. Let's, uh, what did I want to do now? Oh yes, in the settings, I told you you can also use MD5 checksums. If I switch that on, it says these two files are different but if I go into automatic mode, it now says there's an anomaly. And basically what this anomaly says, if I go into it, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Couldn't open the, uh, I forgot the help file, sorry. But <laughs> basically what this is saying, this gives error code 22. If you go to the help, it will tell you that the files are identical, but the dates are different. That's one of the possible things that can happen. Same dates, or different dates and times, but they're the same. So why copy them? What then happens, you can decide that it automatically updates the date. Um, you might want to ignore a particular synchronization. You can press the ignore button, and what you will see is that this has been ignored it's been grayed out. So if you then synchronize, it won't do anything. Besides simple synchronization, we have a lot of options which we can use when doing synchronization. If we go to the, oh, I will tell you about the sounds first. Okay, sounds, 
Uh, I'd said earlier about um, the buzzer uh, not always being present. So you can check if you wish. Uh, you can do a sound check. That's the sound. The buzzer isn't present. So you can select what you want to hear if necessary. Uh, the volume is, is also set there. You see, here you have the volume. You can move it up or down. And that is independent of the standard volume of the multimedia. Okay, settings. And then we see what we have. As I said, you have two, basically two possibilities for synchronization or backup. You can do it manually, so step for step. Every file will occur, or you can change the option if it's the file size in manual. You can also change in automatic. Manual is just, have I thought it through what I want to do, and you can step through. So with automatic, you see what happens if the source file is changed and the target was deleted, we transfer. We have all these possibilities of making sure that a synchronization works properly. You see some things like both files have changed since the last synchronization. You might want that to just give an anomaly and say, oh, which one have I really changed? Which one is the right one? So you cross-check everything. Again, you can check files with MD5. If necessary, you can use compression. You can select a drive. After you put compression on, uh, you get all the drives, but I say, OK, only show me those that are available. And I can say, OK, anything going to drive H will be compressed. I can also say not to compress certain files because they're already compressed. Stupid. If you want, you can add a file. And you say, where's that gone? Well, it's at the bottom of the list. It's alphabetical. And like everything, you say, well, get rid of it again. Yeah. You can verify after compression if you want. You can verify after decompression. So cross-check that it's all right. You can indicate the minimum size of a file before you start to compress it. We use Huffman compression, so anything under 4K doesn't make sense because that's the minimum block. Yeah. You might say, well, I want to do encryption. That's also possible for certain drives. You can say which drives, when copying files, will go to the vault. You can say, again, which files you don't want to be written to the vault, like temp files. But you probably wouldn't copy temp files anyway. For example, I can ignore certain files, files to ignore. I don't want to back up temporary files, generally. But it's generally the ones you forget to back up or what you want. You can also do, say, well, that's too difficult to say what I want to include. I just want to say what I want to exclude. So you have that just possibility. You can. It files is. Files to ignore, then exclude. Yes, you can files to ignore, or you, you can ignore them, and those you include, or you can exclude them. Normally, you exclude the files by specifying them. But you can do it the other way around, say, these are the files I want to include, effectively. But those are not the files to ignore. Ah, it, you should change the text there when it changes. But you understand, you use it once, you know what you're doing. The same applies for pass. And again, here you can use wildcards if you wish. 
So you can use any path, say like um, I have a, a series of backup directories. So as I say, backup star dot star, and if it's backups one, two, three, it will ignore them all. Um, so, oh yeah. Whenever we do anything, we create a log file. If you wish, you can say, well, only do the last 10 log files, and then throw them away. In the vault, you have a copy of the same file available. You can say, how many sync copies in the vault do I want? You know, if you haven't found that it's wrong after saving 100, why save 101? What do you want? <sighs> Some various options. You can verify files. No, you can verify. I will start again. You can verify a file after writing it. Just checks with using the verify bit. You can show ignored files in the list. You've specified maybe I don't want to see star.temp files. If you specify don't show them, the system is quicker because it doesn't have to list them. It's more efficient. This system also has script files which can automatically start or not. You can enable, disable. You can do a refresh after synchronization because after you synchronize you want to see what the current status is. You can show the network address. I will put that on and with a bit of luck you can just about read here local h test one. Yeah, it's the same drive so we don't get a different network address. That's the name of the network. So you can cross-check things are really different. What more do we have? Good question. Um, I think I have <coughs> almost all of the settings. Um, oh yeah, there's an ID check. It's possible whenever, and this applies to scripts, whenever you're copying something from a one drive to another drive, for example, if it's a USB, and you have this synchronization plan, and you put in the USB, you want to know, hey, that is the correct USB. In the script file, it will write what the ID is of that particular USB. And if it doesn't, be, is, if it's not the correct USB, it gives an error and will not carry out the script. Um, and this last one which is here this is just the files you will see with GFC everybody knows GFC I think yeah. at least one person <laughs> no graphical file compare so you can say which files if for some reason I want to have a look which ones I will see a bin file is no use in GFC Okay, um, you can, the horizontal bars, which of course this is not long enough, but you can, if this name is a long name, you might want to be able to read all of it. On the other side, you can link it so they both go synchronously. What you see here is this symbol. This is because I said compress it. So this tells you compress that drive and because we have the same drive letter for both it's for both boom, boom, boom. yes languages which language do you want any one which I would choose will not work of course because I don't have the correct it says Messico troppo lungo <laughs> Italian and that's correct <laughs> yes, of course, because I haven't got the DLL there, and that has not been incorporated in this version. No problem, right? Well, if, if you think of more values, it's very much supposed to crash. 
Yes, but the language isn't there. It's, this is a little bit work in progress. It's almost finished. Uh, one of the things is I'm having to update all the language files, and it's only additional messages which, in fact, uh, were there. Uh, now, if normally, it, 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 well, actually, they are there, but they're not correct. And there's a lot of backups, checking the version number. That is normal, but not in this version. Now I've got to try and find where, where was the bloody file? Uh, yes. You saw them there, the DEs. Eh? Okay, they're there, but because I have not yet updated the check on the version number in the language files, it goes wrong. Oh, no, it's there. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a, a program that's missing. I see that. That's the vault program. Otherwise, I could show you how the vault works. But basically, it's just a list of the files that have been copied with the original copy date. And you can, if required, bring them back in. The uh, direction wheel has now a direction underneath because you can't always think, if I press this, which way is it going to go? So, it goes quicker. We have the possibility to look for stuff, but of course, to look for stuff, we need first of all to have something. So if I want, and then I say, if it's a whole list of files, I can look for a particular file and I can say, well, find then the next one or find the previous one. You can say if it's a file or if it's a directory. There's a lot of things you can just do. All to help you when you're copying stuff or synchronizing, if something goes wrong or you want to check something, it's there for you. I think that is basically what I wanted to tell you. Um, you have, oh yeah, we have scripts. So for example, if I do this, if I said I want to do this every week, every day, or what have you, it's easier if I make a script. So I can say, okay, save the script, and I will get a name I have to supply. Simple name. And first of all, it says, what does this script do? Is this a backup from left to right or a synchronization? So I can select it. I can enter a description of the script, say what it's doing. Very descriptive. Then I can do all the functions that are available with regard to settings, and these are kept separate from your standard settings. So when you run this script, it runs with these settings and not with the settings that are standard in the program. Pass to ignore, and I can put in subdirectories, yes or no. Enable EA file support, because one of the things this program does when copying to a device that does not support EAs, it makes uh, a database of EAs, and that he puts also to the uh, location where you're writing to or reading from. And next time it will pick up the EAs and use them accordingly. Okay, afterwards you say, okay, if the script ends, I can give a noise. I think I have the sounds out here. <laughs> oh no, I have them here. Yes. So I can select the sound. So if the script finishes, it can wake you up and you can say, oh, time for another cup of tea. <laughs> um, you can allow the, pro the script to close the program if there are no errors or to close the program, even if there are errors. So you have that possibility. 
let's have a look if I say now edit that script here it is this is what we had selected here's the name and so on and so forth this everything that is in that script is copied and we can edit it and change it if necessary yep and boom well basically I think I've told you everything the only real way is to do a real synchronization um, as I said what you get on the left side is what you're copying from or copying to or synchronizing you get in the list if you only want to see hey what is uh, the same those are the only two the same and so on so you could very easily cross check what's happening I was what you also see this is the prediction window here it says here's the anomaly here it says nothing's going to happen but if it's going from left to right you get the arrow to from the left to the right or right to the left so you know exactly what's going to happen before you say do it okay that is basically easy sync this is version 3.2 the original version uh, came out in thinking about 2011 it's been updated since with various features people want I always say if you want something more let me know and I'll see if I can implement it this is one of my programs you can buy it is always on a 30-day trial period download it it is on hobbes you can download it try it if you think it's worthwhile send me a mail I'll give you an uh, the registration or you can buy this directly from Arca OS or from Arca Noel I mean. Questions?